Welcome to our Capital Recovery Center where we focus on two key concepts. How can we help you with your recovery today? And what does recovery mean to you? Tune in Tuesdays at 10 a.m. to our coffee and conversation meeting and Thursdays at 1 p.m. to our all recovery meeting. For updated information, follow our Capital Recovery Center Facebook page. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen and I'm one of your Capital Recovery Coaches. Uh, welcome to our coffee and conversation, uh, now scheduled for 2. Mm -hmm. 2 p.m. Uh, and welcome also. My name is Craig. I am also a recovery certified, certified recovery coach, and uh, it's always a pleasure to do this segment with Ken and Mike and, and, and Raina. So we have a host of uh, new meetings and events uh, coming up for the month of May and also for um, consistently for the future. Um, we still have our all recovery meetings every Thursday at 1 p.m. It is hi a hybrid event, so you can come to the center, uh, 72 North Pearl Street, or you can join us um, through Facebook or YouTube. We also have today um, a men in training, a mentoring group, which will be held at 5 p.m. Uh, I'm gonna put the flyer up for you guys to see. Um, so this is also a hybrid event. You are welcome to come in um, to the center. We are open today until 9 p.m. Come and join us. Uh, this will be hosted by um, Mr. Craig. Ah. <laughs> uh, we also have our Greg Tuesdays um, virtual meeting. It's also a hybrid event. You are welcome to come in. Um, we are trying to do activities to show uh, ways we can uh, show our gratitude for ourselves and uh, our like our gratitude during our recovery. Uh, this is held every Tuesday at 7 p.m. If you see the flyer up on the screen, this is also a hybrid event. You're welcome to come in. I believe I already mentioned that. And then our family meeting, which will be held this Saturday. It's held every third Saturday of each month. So this Saturday, Saturday, May 21st, um, this is scheduled from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. So you are welcome to come and share your experience. Um, also a hybrid event at 72 North, North Pearl Street. All right. And so I have a few announcements and I'm gonna try to be as brief and quick as possible. And so um, this coming Saturday, May 21st at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's going to be a walk for wellness uh, in event that's going to be held at the Memorial Stadium here at Bristol High School, 51 West Ave, Bristol, New Jersey. Uh, this event is a free admission. Um, they're going to be doing a walk for wellness. Uh, some of the uh, people, healthcare workers, are going to be there from Ascender. New Jersey Family Success Center, Greater Bristol area, and the Spirit of Health. Anyone who come out and get vaccinated, they're going to be giving out a $25 gift card. Anyone who get uh, vaccinated. Also, save the date. Um, there's going to be a a job fair hosted by the Judiciary Opportunity for Building Skills. Job program, career and resource fair. That's the name of the resource fair. And this is going to be held on June the 7th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. A rain date, if it rains, is going to be held uh, June the 14th. That's on a Tuesday. And last but not least, uh, save the day virtual hiring event. And this is this event is going to take place um, Wednesday, June the 22nd of this year and uh this is hosted by the new jersey division of vocational rehabilitation they are in collaboration with the office of federal contract compliance program 
We hold a targeted job fair for individuals with disabilities and veterans with service-connected disabilities. And so we're doing a whole lot of things in the community of Cumberland County. And so we want to let you know that uh, there are events and we are here to serve and bring you all the updated information as we get it, we give it to you. Yes, and don't forget that our recovery on wheels uh, will be out tomorrow at the mini park across from City Liquor in Millville. Mm. Same time as usual, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then the following Monday, it will be out at the Millville Police Department. Yes, and so I believe we got everything out the way, Karen. Yeah. So. We got a busy schedule today. We got uh, after coffee and conversation at two. She already told you about the MIT, the private live mentoring uh, that's going to take place here. Uh, I'll be hosting it. Uh, Mike can't join us this week. And uh, at seven, I believe Karen and Raina will. Raina. Yep. I believe they're going to be doing it. So this week is a part two of. We did part one last week on how drug addiction affects the entire family. And so I'm gonna give you a quick overview of some of the topics that we discussed. And um, it said family, familial relationships and addiction. We talked about that, how addiction affects children. We talked about that, how addiction affects parents and how addiction affects siblings. And then we went on to talk about the six family roles in addiction. And they are, number one, the addict, the caretaker, the hero, the scapegoat, uh, the mascot, and the lost child. And so there are, there were six family roles that uh, family members would play or do play in the household and that uh, whether it be the parent or the sibling that's suffering or someone in the family that is suffering from some type of addiction. Part two of that, we're gonna be talking about the, the effects of addiction on a family, all right? And so I'm gonna read a little bit and then Karen gonna read a little bit and then uh, we'll go from there. And so it says, oh, oh also this article is from PeaceValleyRecovery.com. We want to give them a shout out because uh, we don't want to take it for granted or let someone take it for granted that this is coming from us. And so this article is from them. And then the effects of addiction on a family. Just like addiction causes a variety of effects on the person using substances, it leads to another set of effects on the family. The exact outcome depends on things like which family member struggles with addiction, the age of the children, or whether children live with their parents. Not all families experience the same effects, but oftentimes they are at least somewhat familiar uh, what's going on with a loved one inside the family suffering from addiction. So we want to keep this in mind because a lot of times we always try to deal with the person who has the issue. And a lot of times the family member, whether it be the child, sibling, or the other parent, whether it be the mom or the dad, is being neglected and overlooked. And so there's a whole holistic aspect of dealing with uh, the aspect of addiction. It ain't just a substance uh, issue. There's a host of other uh effects that takes place all right and so the next one i believe is uh, financial hardship financial hardship mm. it isn't cheap to support are you going to read okay uh, it isn't cheap to support an active drug habit uh, many addicts funnel all their money toward getting the substances they need they may have a hard time keeping a job so they ask for money food shelter or other forms of support. Some might ask for help paying for a treatment facility or other program. Families tend to take on financial responsibility for an addicted family member. 
parents allow children to live with them while trying to get back on their feet. They pay for lawyers or post bail if legal troubles start. They're all too familiar with the balance of how to help an addict without enabling them. Oh, I'm glad they said that. I'm glad you read the last part where they mentioned enabling, because that's something that we don't want to do uh, to enable someone to continue on in their uh, state of addiction. But this aspect talks about the, the financial drain that is a burden that is placed on the family member. And so a lot of times the person that's uh, dealing with the substance issue, uh, whether they know it or not, they become a liability than an asset to the, fam to the family financial uh, revenue that comes into the household. And so it definitely would be a strain. I know when I was uh, in my state of uh, substance use disorder, addiction, all in fancy terms, but um, I know I was getting in trouble with the law. And uh, I remember a time, I'm gonna share this with you, Karen. I have uh, some, I have two sisters and uh, it was around Christmas time and I got in some trouble and I wanted to get out of jail, Karen. So I called my mom and uh, she said, well, I don't have it to get you out. She said, but if I do come get you, I'll be taking your sister them Christmas uh, gift money and coming to get you. And, you know, at the time I was being selfish. So that's what drug addiction do. You know, we want to keep it. We all about us, you know, we selfish, we ain't worm. And so at the time I wasn't, I'm going to be honest, I was like, can you please come here? <laughs> and, and, and but now I think about it, you know, and uh, it's 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 sad that my mom she ne neglected, not totally neglected, but she took their money that was intended for them to have a good time on Christmas to come get me. So, sisters, if you're list listening, Abigail, Daisy, if you're listening, I apologize uh, for being selfish. Honestly. Steve. All right. For, uh, so I wanted to share also. So from my my experience, right, um, there was also financial hardship, but in the fact that we couldn't leave any money laying around, mm -hmm. um, not even coins, um, not even a debit card, let alone any valuable thing that could be sold. Uh, it came to the point where we pretty much didn't have anything <laughs> that that was like luxurious looking, because if not, it was definitely going to be sold. Mm -hmm. So everything had to be guarded. Yep. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's an uncomfortable situation where everything has to be guarded due to a loved one who's suffering. Now we want to make this perfectly clear that addiction is, uh, it's not a crime, it's a disease. And so people who suffer from this disease need help. And so that's why we get the message out uh, that there are a whole host of aspects that one goes through, uh, not only the individual, once again, this article talks about how drug addiction affects the an entire family. All right, the next one says, increased risk of abuse. As, a, a, as addiction process progresses, people become unpredictable and difficult to deal with. All right, it says they are erratic, Frustrated and angry, lashing out at those closest to them. Drugs and alcohol affect an individual inhibitions. People are more likely to act out while under the influence. The mind altering state. Basically, what he's saying is a person who's under the influence of substances, uh, nine tenths of the time, their, their natural or normal state of being has been altered. So they, we have a tendency to lash out because we want what we want when we want it, you know, and regardless of who get hurt, uh, it's very cunning, baffling, and manipulative. And so one of the most serious ways of addiction affects the entire family is the higher risk of abuse. There is a higher likelihood that family members may experience violence at the hands of an addict, whether it's emotional, physical, or sexual abuse, the risk increases. And so 
like I may mention earlier, it's not all about the substance uh, effects of the drugs. There are, there are components where the article talks about the emotional components, the physical and the sexual uh, component, sexual abuse component. And so um, we just, I think this article is so uh, profound because a lot of people may be hiding uh, how they actually feeling. So that's why I believe, Karen, the, the group that you came up with, uh, family, what is it called again? Yeah, family meeting. It was actually Melissa's idea. Melissa's idea? I can't idea. take the credit for it. <laughs> okay, Melissa. Okay, we're going to take our hat off to you and keep it on as well. But uh, yeah, because a lot of times uh, family needs to uh, speak out and let let everyone know how they became affected because one thing i learned about in therapy and therapeutic community the tc community which is a peer-driven community for people suffering from substance use disorder is that in order the first step to recovery is admitting that you have a problem and so that goes i believe both ways whether it's from the addict or the family member you know let it be known that how you feel. So please come out Saturday and be a part of what we're doing here as well. And share your story because you're not alone. A lot of times, I know when I was little, I used to think that things would just only happen to me. And one of my teachers said, no, you're not the only person in the world who goes through stuff. There's other people just like you go through not the same or similar things. And so we like to share uh, our information with someone that if we can help, if they're sinking and drowning, we want to throw them a lifeguard or a life jacket and save someone's life, all right? Oh, also, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. May, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so uh, if you know someone who's struggling or who needs some help with mental health as well, feel free because a lot of people who suffer from substance use disorder is also suffering from mental illness. They call it dual diagnosis. Sound like a sound like a smart guy when I say that, right? I'm not I'm not that smart. Like Mike said, you know, I give I give the glory to God. All right, Karen, if you want to go ahead, I can So I just I just wanted to add on to given the fact that we're talking about how this affects the family, mm -hmm. um the increased risk of abuse also causes a lot of uh, emotional instability. I think throughout the entire, um, throughout the entire members of the family. Mm -hmm. I know that it, for me, in my experience, there was a lot of anger, hostility uh, throughout like the entire experience of trying to help this person get into recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, to add that takes a toll on, on the entire family, you know. And the next one is uh, more addiction in the family. Another impact of addiction on the family unit is the chance that another family member will also turn to substances. Children who grow up with a family member that abuses drugs are more likely to turn to substances. They follow the examples set for them. Siblings might use substances as a way to escape the chaos in their house. Oftentimes, substance abuse runs in families. The chances of having more than one person in the family with a problem are high. This creates another pattern of addiction and the cycle starts all over again. Wow. You know, um, a lot of times we, especially for children, they are have so impressionable and they don't have all the uh, mental tools or the maturity know-how and if they're not guided in the right direction they may succumb to the same behavior you know whether it be a sibling or a parent because a lot of times um, we may think that is uh, the norm or that is the okay that person doing it uh, not only in my house but outside my household I see so many people doing, they look like they're having a good time. They look like they're enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, you know, there's consequences uh, to any behavior, you know. And so 
And the consequences is that you get rewarded for doing good, you get punished for doing something bad. So we want to do, we want to be rewarded for doing what's good. And so just by seeing someone who's appeared, let me say that again, looking at someone who appeared to be having a good time can only be uh, far from the truth. You know, it can be um, the imagery uh, that someone putting up that they actually having a good time. And in all actuality, they can be masking some of the pain and suffering that they're actually feeling. And so they try to uh, drink their uh, problems away or use drugs to get rid of their problems. And a lot of times when, uh, when it's all said and done and they don't have their substance, the reality of the, the issues or the facts still remains. And so we need we need to speak to someone, speak to a recovery coach, a counselor, a therapist, a sponsor, someone to get help. And so feel free to contact us here at Capital Recovery Center, and uh, we're glad to uh, guide you in the right direction. Right? And so broken family. Let's talk about broken families a little bit. The effects of addiction tear families apart. A person who struggles with addiction usually pushes their family members to their limits. Some people can only take so much before they decide to cut their loved one from their life. So long as they're in active addiction, this leads to severed ties and broken family. And so oftentimes, uh, before I read some more, I just want to share uh, when I was uh, in jail, let me put them in jail. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be as real as I can be, transformative as I can be, because I think it's important. A lot of times, uh, there be people who I have run across and met that actually they have severed their ties uh, because they have uh, broken, burned a lot of bridges. We call it burning a lot of bridges. That means that the bridges that they once used to get across from point A to point B has been torn down. The family members do all they can, all they could. Uh, like Karen mentioned, uh, some people may have took a random, or like I mentioned, you know, constantly calling, I need bail money, and you can't not uh, receive help. And people that are incarcerated, a lot of times when they come home, they don't have no family support. And so they have to turn to uh, different agencies for support because they have uh, burnt their bridges or severed their ties. And so we're here at Calvary Recovery Center. We try to restore the families. Uh, I'm going to be talking about that mentoring and throwing out uh, MIT about uh, restoring family relationships uh, as we go on and pick up momentum. But that's so important. Uh, restoring family dynamics, all right? And so the article continues to talk about some parents also use to the point that their spouse or the state declare them incapable of caring for their children. Now this is talking about uh, someone who, um, a parent member who has become so in incapacitated from the use of drugs that diapers, well, I don't know, they call it DCMP. Uh, Say it again. DCPMP. Yeah, them. Uh, the, those they have to step in, foster care, uh, adoption agency. They have to take uh, step in when uh, the extended family is not able to uh, help out with with a parent or a sibling or family member who having a problem, and their child have to depend on the state. And so that's a serious matter. Sure. If, huh? if, and I just want to say, like, if I'm being honest, mm -hmm. I, when I was going through, through, you know, through it, um, I actually wanted somebody to call DCPMP on my parents because mm -hmm. I was like, um, if you know, if this person doesn't do it, let somebody, I don't know, intervene or, or help them or guide them. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that now that I don't know if that would have been the best thing. I think. Mm -hmm. 
whatever happened had to happen the way it happened. Mm. And I'm grateful that we didn't get that break. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And so Karen has actually been a voice for the voiceless. I'm, I'm, me too as well. Uh, we try to be the voice for the voiceless because there could be a lot of people who are crying out, like Karen said, who is crying out. Is that from the day comments? Yeah, Miss um, Miss Dawn Coozer. Hi, Miss Dawn. Hi, Miss Dawn. And uh, wow. She says that's the truth. The family goes through a lot. It's never just the addict. That's tight, but sometimes family is so involved with what is going on with the addict that they don't realize how it is affecting the whole family. That is definitely true. That's so true. Thank you for sharing, Miss Dawn. Um, once again, on Saturday we have a a family uh, setting where we're asking people to, if they would like to come share, they know someone who would like to share who has been affected by a loved one who um, has been using substance use disorder, and they just might want to tell their story. You know, hopefully we can save someone's life and uh, be the voice for the voices. All right, it says children who, thank you for sharing, Ms. Dawn, I appreciate, we, we appreciate that. Children who lose a parent or parents to drugs are left with feelings of abandonment and betrayal, betrayal that may cause them to write their parents off for months, years, or even decades. You heard Karen just said, she said she thanked God that, um, that they did, the family unit stayed united and that they didn't have to go through uh, foster care uh, because um, it's so important to be connected with uh, your, your your bloodline, your family members, and but you definitely want all to do all you can to save the ones who are struggling. So, thank you for sharing, Karen. As well. You're mm -hmm. All help. right. So I can help is available. So help is available for help is available for the families of addicts. It's difficult to cope when a loved one struggles with addiction. You may feel like you've tried everything to get them the help they, the help they need. When your attempts are unsuccessful, though, it's painful and disheartening, to say the least. If, even if your loved one chooses to continue using substances, deciding to find help for yourself may be one of the best choices you can make. Mm. Help isn't only available for people who live in active addiction. It's available for the family of addicts as well. If you feel the effects of your loved one's substance use, seeking help for yourself is a great way to begin your journey of to healing. Wow. So don't neglect yourself. You know, you, we want to do all we can for our loved ones, but, you know, we're no help to anyone else if we're not uh, healthy. And so we'd like to talk about, especially in this field of um, health care, uh, providing services for those who are suffering. We like to uh, talk about it's important to have some type of self-care because um, whether what that may look like to you, it may be journaling, it may take some time to get the proper rest, to eat the proper foods, to talk to someone, share, uh, get some feedback, some positive feedback. Whatever that is uh, for you, seek that help. So individual therapy, it's, the article says individual therapy is the first line of defense for someone trying to find help as the family member of an addict. It's simple to seek out therapy if no one else in the family wants to look for help. Individual therapy focuses on you, your goals, and the things that hold you back from achieving them. And so, you're not being selfish. A lot of people think, oh, I'm being selfish because uh, I'm only thinking about, and people sometimes will lay their guilt trip on you. Oh, you just worrying about you. You ain't worrying about me, 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 me. But hey, listen, people have to be healthy and whole and feel that they are uh, functioning at a high level within their own self and it's within their own self care. And so, we have to be in it together, if, but if someone don't want to uh, take the right advice to get healthy, uh, sobriety, and recovery, then uh, 
you know, seek some help for yourself. And maybe you, that person who's seeking help for himself can get a, a better uh, idea or better find out better ways to assist their loved ones. So you never know. Give it a try. There's also a useful avenue to explore the effects of your loved one's addiction. Therapy helps you identify which role you took on to cope, which roles you took on to cope, and how you can overcome those harmful ways of operating in the world. All right. So we got two more uh, topics we're going to discuss, and we're going to move on. Um, family counseling. Family counseling is a great choice for multiple family members trying to find help together. Bringing multiple members together allows clinicians to watch family dynamics play out in a safe and supportive environment. Family counseling is useful whether the addict is interested in participating or not. Your family can heal without the involvement of the loved one using substances. Focusing on your healing instead of directing attention outward is a way to take back your power. It allows you and your family to recognize that you still have control over many areas of your life. Wow. So don't just surrender and you know say, oh, I'm a bad parent. I'm a bad brother. I'm a bad sister. No, you're not a bad person. You know, sometimes um, a person not ready to change, it's nothing you, I can say or you can say. Uh, only thing we can do is um, continue to pray for them, continue to encourage them, continue to seek uh, avenues and ways to uh, help them. But uh, when it all, when the dust settle, we have to start taking care of ourselves. And don't allow anybody to drain your energy with, you know, exchanging their negative, their negative energy and try to transfer it on to you, you know. Get like the article say, get back your power, you know, get back where you feel energized and motivated doing the things that you enjoy doing. You want to go on a vacation while that person wants to uh, continue on. Not to say that you don't love them, not to say just put them in the back burner, but uh, take care of yourself as well and the family. And the last one talks about Al Anon family groups. Al Anon family groups are. An alternative, alternative to Alcoholic Anonymous that focus on the struggles unique to loved ones of alcoholics. Al Anon teaches you to find contentment and happiness independent of your loved one. After years of feeling controlled by their behavior, Al Anon frees you from the hold they have over you. You learn to find freedom and joy amidst the chaos, even if it remains under your rule. And so we are so grateful that we had this opportunity to share with you. Once again, my name is Craig. I am your certified peer recovery coach. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget our um, men in training group at five and our gratitude day at seven today. Um, actually, gratitude day would be a great way to start with your process of healing yourself. So come join us. Um, again, it's virtual or in person at 72 North Pearl Street. Thank you. Happy Tuesday, everyone.